Hi there, guys. I just wanted to take an opportunity to show you how to handle some of these larger spinner-like um, props uh, and, and how you can determine how many pixels to put on each port connection if it's not uh, something that x lights can natively handle. A classic example of this is a MOA or a Rosa Wreath, some of those bigger props. So first of all, let's put one on the display. So I'm going to click on the import button, click and drag. Do that again. Click on the download, click and drag. And I'm going to type in MOA. Insert that model. No. All right, so by default, it's set up to be two strings of 320. So that tells us there's 640 nodes total. What happens if we wanted to do three strings? We could, since 640 is not divisible by three, you, you can't just change it to three. It's not going to work. There's no combination that would work. So the way we handle that in X Lights is to create a shadow model. A shadow model is different than a circle model in that it becomes a custom model. Custom models are the only kinds of models that you can control or tell it where to start and stop each string. So let me go through that step here. So you right click on the yellow, export as a custom model, save it someplace like your desktop. Doesn't really matter, we're just gonna use it once. We're gonna import it back, click and drag, click on it, import it back. All right, so there we go. So we got the shadow model. I'm going to rename it. I'm going to add the word shadow model on there to make it really obvious. Hit enter. And uh, let's let's assume that this one here is actually called GE MOA. So it's you know, nice, nice and neat. We like our OCD here. So clicking on this one is our shadow model. Now we can say, let's make it three strings. And because it's a custom model, you get this option here, individual start nodes. And now you can control exactly how many are in each string, each port connection. So the, the uh, first one always starts at one. The second one, maybe we want that to start after 200 pixels on the first one. So this actually would be 201. And this one might be 401. So that means there's 200 on this one, 200 on this one. And that leaves 240 to be on this last one. So we're going to use these three. Uh, and what we're going to do is make that a shadow of this one. How do we do that? Well, we just created the shadow model. We're going to click on shadow model for just to, uh, that, that helps for the check sequence so that it knows that it's a shadow model. Now we're going to put this on your visualizer, not the original one. So go back to the controller, I'm going to go to visualize. I'm going to go to the shadow model. That's this one here. And I'm going to drag it over to the ports. And now you should see it's three ports, 200, 200, and 240. If I was to drag the original one over here, just, just to show you for an example, it would be 320 and 320. Um, there would be no way to make it uh, a different number. So just uh, dragging it back because we don't need that on here. We just need the shadow model. Going to close that. Don't worry about saving yet. We're not quite done. We'll come back to this one and we're going to make it overlap or shadow. This one's going to shadow the other one. So one's going to point to the other. So we're going to make this one starting locate uh, controller. We're going to go to the drop down. We're going to say use start channel. Then on this uh, entry for start channel, you click it, click the triple dots. We're going to choose start of model. And we're basically going to lay it on top of our shadow model. So GE MOA, there it is, shadow model, perfect. Make sure this says one at the top and click OK. So now every effect that you put on this yellow will happen on the shadow model and the shadow model is on the controller. Therefore, it goes to the lights in the proper order. Um, so we would place this one on your display and I'm just gonna move it here. You can pretend it's in the, right in my display. It's all good. And this guy here, we do not need to worry about it. If you're in 2D, you can actually hide it by changing the preview. Um, 
I think I can do that. I'm going to show you a trick. I think you can do that. If I go turn off my 3D for a moment, change the preview to unassigned, turn the 3D back on, boom, it is gone. You cannot see it on your 3D display anymore. It's still on my visualizer. If I go to visualize, still there, but it's not on my display anymore. It's a little, little hack workaround. So there you go. You've got this uh, prop that was normally two strings is now pointing to a shadow model that is three strings. And it, you can control exactly um, how many are going to each port without having to do some uh, weird hackery on your lights. Hope that helps. If you have any questions, go to the uh, x Zoom room and we'll, we'll work through it with you. Have a great day.